Hello, good evening. My name is Kenneth Tucker. I'm to let you know today, if it wasn't for the veterans program and the veteran assisting me, I wouldn't know where I would be to this day. Um, after my uh, time spent in the incarceration, um, it was rough and I didn't know where I could turn to. I didn't know who I could rely on because I didn't have no family here and the my associates, they just pulled me right in like I was family. And they gave me clothing, food, etc. And it helped me during that rough time. Now I have a car, I'm in school, and I have a roof over my head, and I don't have to worry about nothing ever again. Because due to my associates and the help with the veterans program, they have really done an outstanding job. and. Um, Tell you the truth. Now I'm with my family. Now, you know, we're gonna have uh, reliable resources that we can use. And uh, my case manager, they pulled me right in. His name is Vince Woods. He's been outstanding. And I would want. He told me not to mention his name in the video, but I would let that name be known because he has been there for me through the whole the hard times, really. You know, when I had nobody else. So, and that being said, um, you can look and tell. I'm looking good. I'm looking nice. You know, I don't want for anything now with the help of the veterans program and the case managers. I'm in school now, and I plan to transfer to a four-year college and get my degree. And with the help of the um, voc rehab and you know, with the assistance I've been getting, I haven't really been able to come out of pocket for nothing. Okay, originally I'm from South Carolina and I've joined the Army up here, you know, I got into a little trouble, you know, it was, um, you know, push come to shove, it was rough, you know, but when I got out, the veterans and my case manager helped made it a lot easier versus me doing it online because I didn't have anyone um, in another state where I don't know anybody and they just reeled me right on in like I was family. Uh, my name is Justin. Uh, I met Vince, my case manager, about going on three years now. I met him at a work release. I came in from a job search one day and went in there. He's like, hey, we got a a vet rep we want to talk to you real quick. I go in there and he sat down and he said, all right, tell me about yourself. You know, most people, you know, well, maybe not most, but a lot of people that we talk to when you're locked up kind of talk at you, not necessarily to you. Uh, is always super comfortable, never forced, never really arrogant or looking down at us. It was kind of neat. But I told him, like, I don't have any family up here. I don't, you know, I really, I'm just, it's just me. We could, I don't really know what's going on. Um, you know, I, I was in foster care when I don't, you know, I'm from Georgia, the other side of the country, you know. He, he's like, uh, he's like, well, are you doing all right? Is everything going on? I'm like, well, I don't, I don't have anything. The next day he showed up with a big old bag full of soap and shampoo and laundry detergent. When I got, uh, about three days later, he got together with my CCO at the time and they found a volunteer that donated three sets of clothes, uh, a watch, a belt, boots, like, it was cool, I was still wearing the stuff that I got out of the closet at, at a shelter. So, uh, it, it, was, it was nice, I'll tell you. Uh, when I got out, I didn't have a car. It, the bus is pretty bad. When you got enough time to go to one place a day, and it, uh, it builds up, after a while, you got me a bus pass. For, for a long time, you know, my bus pass, so I was able to stay with and got me a Jeep. I made it to work. Um, e even now, I've got, a, I've got a new job. And Vince called me up, found out he had a new job, found out that I'm a mechanic, automatic technician, te automatic te automotive technician. And uh, he said, how are you doing? You know, do you have tools? And he just signed me up to get a bunch of free tools that to literally save my job. We, uh, we've pretty much finished the, the whole plan we started when we first got together. I mean, it just makes a huge difference having somebody 
just somebody, you know, that you, you got a question, you need some help with something that every time they, they come through. Yeah, I think uh, I met my case manager just under three years ago, maybe three in June. Let's see. That was my first and last time being locked up. I, uh, I've been able to keep my head, you know, clean, you know, just head above the water, you know, in the past. You know, it was, I don't know entirely what's going to go and happen in the future, but, you know, I, I know I'm going to be able to make, take care of it and get there. I'm going to try to go to school, finish up my mechanical studies. And uh, I think that'll do it. All right, my name is Dave Williams. Uh, I am not new to incarceration since 94. I've basically only been out maybe 40, 44 months, 45 months since 94. All the rest has been in Department of Corrections. If that's what you want to call it. Uh, quick thing, all my other three times down besides this one, I had a little bit of family support. But the only thing I didn't have really support on was uh, on how not to come back. There's a difference between your parents giving you a car, giving you a place to live, giving you money, but only certain people can get to you so they can put in your head the things to do not to come back to prison. Cars, money, and those help you get around, but they don't get you set up for the skills needed to stay out. My caseworker, Vince, Vincent, uh, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, in DOC, when you hear anything about the VA, all they care about is them overpaying you. That's all they care about. I'm not going to lie. Uh, when I ver first heard about Vincent, I was in Progress House work release. It might have been like, let's see, August 2015. So they said, hey, yeah, the, the VA dude's coming. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever, who cares? They're like, no, he's, he's actually a pretty good, decent dude. So I'm like, all right. So I show up. I see Vince. You know, he got a little swag to him, so he good, you know. And uh, the first thing that impressed me was he looked me in my eye and shook my hand. That's the first thing. You know, he wasn't trying to belittle me or anything else these other DLC people do. Uh, he, he just let me be me. Uh, he felt free to share with me that, hey, he was incarcerated. And right there, my walls dropped just a little, you know. Because I really don't care what he has to offer me, you know, through the VA. What I cared about was I could genuinely feel that he, he cared about us as a person. Us not coming back to DLC is what kept attracted me to the whole situation. Um, we sat down from day one, and he, he just looked at me and says, what's your plan, man? What do you want to do? And I told him, I kind of looked at him and said, I don't want to come back. And he kind of like rolled his eyes at me, not arrogantly, just like, oh, here we go, same old, you know. But what it came down to was he, he was trying to pick my brain. You know, he wasn't trying to tell me what to do or tell me how to do it. He just, hey, A, B, C, D worked for me. What do you want to do? What about schooling? And me and him come back and forth with this schooling thing because he wants me to do a four-year degree. I keep telling myself, no, nah, I'm going to go to a community college. I mean, a uh, technical college. And he says, man, you got to think out the box. You got to think out the box. He says, what got you in prison? Thinking in the box. And I'm going to a technical college, but I don't know. I, I was talking about it with a friend this morning, and uh, they told me the same thing, man. Go to college. You know, four years. You're, first of all, I'm a minority, okay, uh, by my race. I'm a minority because I've been in prison. I'm a, a golf war veteran. Like Vincent says, when you talk about felons, you hit a computer button, it takes you to a whole new screen. Well, all three of those things take me to a whole new screens, you know. Um, since I met him, we set a plan, and I was talking to him. My, my, my main plan, I'm not just talking about school. I'm talking about where place to live, a job, um, schooling, who to go to, who to talk to. As you know, it's hard for a felon to find apartments. Because, I mean, to me personally, we're being segregated against. 
yeah, we we messed up, but that shouldn't be a, a, a reason not to run us a place. Well, one morning I've been went to like four different apartments and told me all the same thing. Oh no, you got too many felonies, this that. Uh, and I was about to snap. Just keeping them real. And then I pull over the side of the road and I called Vincent. He said, "Man, come on down, meet me here." He bought me lunch. We talked, and he got me in the right track to find an apartment. And as a matter of fact, the path he put me on in two days, I'm supposed to call back about an apartment. I mean, it's 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 not easy, you know. It's really not easy out here. And I don't know who's looking at this, who's going to look over this, but we need this. Not just veterans, but people coming out of prison. We need this. We need somebody that cares. We need somebody that's going to go that extra mile if we go the extra mile to help us. Cause you, you can say all you want, but it's your actions, Vince's actions are the things that got me to what I'm doing today. You know, I start Bates at the end of this month. I just seen the, the vet rehab program and uh, they're paying for my schooling, all my books, everything. You know, and it's just the things that Vince opened my eyes to. I can't say he taught me. He opened my eyes. He lets you learn yourself. You know, he lets you learn yourself. I mean, he's not going to, you can say one thing, and if he don't agree with it, he's going to say, hey, man, he's going to show you a different way, you know, that might work. You know, so, but uh, we need this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, when I say we. I mean, incarcerated veterans, incarcerated people, and uh, yeah, we're a team. You know, this isn't a me, Vincent thing, me, Jason. Me. We're all a team. You know, because we all been in the, the the same war, the war against crime. You know, which you wonder why we uh we, the the recidivism rate so high because you guys just throw us out there. Okay, this isn't a two or three month thing. It's not. Because I know dudes, I've met guys that came through Vincent, I've known him for like three, four years. And he's still working with them. So, to all you people that are sitting in these chairs up in Olympia, thinking these little two month things you do for us, it's not doing nothing for us. It's people like Vince and the program that he wants to get going is what helps us. You know, because I mean, I'm, I got a temper. And I know if I start to snap, Siri, call Vincent. Call him Vincent. And, and he, first thing he's like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, he'll ask you what's going on. And he knows me, you know. And it's because he chose to, not because he was told to. It's not, it's not his title to answer my phone call while I'm sitting on the side of the road about to, about to snap. But that's just the type of person he is. So uh, let this program work. You know, give it a chance, you know. And for you guys that are just now coming into this, it's a rough road, man. I'm telling you right now, it's a rough road. You know, I'm 47. I just got out doing seven years. Uh, I'm a Gulf War veteran, you know. I'm a sergeant in the military. Did I grow up bad? No. My dad's retired command sergeant major 30 years. My mom's just, they never smoked, drink, cussed, never hit me. All my brothers and sisters got their masters. Then there was me. You know, but today alone, I can say I'm a lot better person than I used to be because I was shown things, a different way of living life, you know, just a, a better way, how to slow down, process. It's nothing DOC, Tommy. It's just, you know, when somebody cares enough to, to care, and that's the biggest thing. He, he, he knows the roads we went down because he, he's been there. He's not like one of these counselors, whatever you want to call them, caseworkers that learn everything from a book, you know, set up with a silver spoon in their mouth. And they're going to try telling me, you know, how I feel. You don't know how I feel. You ain't been there. You know, he has. So, I mean, I feel comfortable with him. And it's hard for me to feel comfortable with anyone after doing, what, 16 years in prison. But it took me a matter of about I don't know, five minutes to get comfortable with him because he, he showed he cared. Um, other than that, uh, have a good day. And